What's up guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hey, my name is Carissa. I am currently 34 weeks pregnant with our first baby, and I wanna share with you my pregnancy essentials. Pregnancy can be very uncomfortable at times, and <laughs> these are some of the items that have been getting me through every day, helping me out, making me feel more like myself. So hopefully this is relevant and useful for you. Before we get started, huge shout out to my doula, Krista. This is her office, if you're wondering why I'm shooting in a different space. We have constant construction, 24 seven it feels like, over at our house, and the drilling starts at seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it has not been ideal, so huge thank you to Krista for sharing your space. I really appreciate it. Something to note, I am adding chapter markers along the play bar. Know what that's called maybe it's a play bar if you would like to see the different categories included in this video check out my pinned comment okay so skincare i try a lot of products due to the nature of my job but my kind of base main product line that i used was zeo skin health they're a medical grade line that you can get at like dermatologists or at uh, skin clinics i love their line but a lot of their products are not pregnancy safe and so I definitely had to switch up what I was using based off of that. I predominantly had to steer away from retinol. I love retinol, but you cannot use it while pregnant or breastfeeding. And so I was looking for something that would kind of be a replacement for that, but would be deemed pregnancy safe. And so a product that I switched to from retinol was Bacchiol. Bacchiol is a plant-based alternative to retinol and it definitely is not the same. It's not as effective, but it does work in a similar way and I do find value in using this product. This one is from Philosophy. It's like a creamy emollient texture and I definitely find that it helps with my skin turnover and the brightness. If you are avoiding retinol, this is such a great alternative. I also had to swap out my go-to moisturizer because that had trace amounts of retinol in it as well. I swapped to an organic moisturizer. This one is from Eminence. This is their probiotic clear skin moisturizer. I don't know if it really helped with clearing my skin per se, but I was really curious in the topical probiotic. I really like this as a lightweight moisturizer and I used the whole jar. I swapped most of my medical grade products out for less active products during pregnancy. But one product that I actually added in that was a medical grade product is the Skin Medica Lightera. Some of you may know if you've been pregnant before or if you know a little bit about skin is you are prone to melasma during pregnancy, which is dark spots and discoloration. I've had friends that have struggled with this in pregnancy and so it was something that was on my radar and I asked the vanity lab where I get my medical grade products what I could do to mitigate the situation and this is what they suggested. So I don't know much about Skin Medica brand. I know that they have a wide skincare line, but this is one that I definitely could recommend for melasma if you are looking to combat dark pigmentation. And in that same line of thinking, you want to make sure to keep your face out of the sun and wear sunscreen. Uh, a sunscreen that I have loved for years. I feel like I've mentioned this in so many videos. It's the Kiehl's Super Fluid Sunscreen. I've like scratched the crap out of this one because it is always carried in my bag. This is a great sunscreen. I've used it for years. It's perfect under makeup. It's very lightweight. It doesn't break me out and I highly recommend it. The next product that I wanna share isn't just limited to pregnancy. This is something that I swapped over to long before I became pregnant and that is a natural deodorant. I've been lucky enough to partner with Schmitz the past two years and I'm super grateful that they're sponsoring today's video because this is a product that I wholeheartedly stand behind. Schmitz is awesome. I love their origin story. I love that it works. I love that it's natural. It is free of all of the nasty things that you do not want to have in your deodorant. There's no aluminum, there's no parabens, there's no phthalates, there's no artificial fragrances. It's 100% natural origin and eco-certified. Schmitz deodorant line is the number one natural deodorant in Canada for a reason. It works. Glenn is now using this, my parents are now using this, and most of my friends are now using this. I just cannot recommend Schmitz enough. I think that it is such a worthwhile brand for you to check out. Some tips for you with Schmitz, you really only need a single swipe. I find that this product can ball up if you apply too much. 
you really only need a single swipe because it is so concentrated. You don't need to use much at all. Another thing to note is to be mindful after shaving. Sometimes with a natural deodorant that contains baking soda like Schmitz, it can be a little bit irritating on your freshly shaved armpits. So wait a couple of hours before you apply or shave at night and then apply it in the morning. You won't probably have the issue with irritation. Long story short, regardless of you being pregnant or not, you should absolutely check out Schmitz and swap to a natural deodorant. It is something that I'm super passionate about. You should not be using something that is clogging your sweat ducts. We are meant to sweat. You just don't have to smell when you do it. Two of my favorite scents are their lavender and sage and their charcoal and magnesium. They have so many different, very, very yummy smells. They all are natural essential oil derived scents. So you don't have to worry about perfumes and fragrances. Highly recommend. If you want to check out Schmitz, I will leave a clickable link in the info box below for you. Something I've been using for skincare for my body has been a mixture of essential oils and different carrier oils. I have to preface this by saying there is no one thing that is going to stop you from getting stretch marks. It's genetic. I feel like so many people ask, hey, how do you prevent stretch marks? What are you using? There are definitely things that are going to support your skin and make your skin happy and moisturized, but Stretch marks come down to genetics. You can obviously do things to help treat your skin well and to just have good skincare in general, being drinking water and staying out of the sun and using moisturizing different things on your skin topically. And that is what I would like to share is what I've been using on my skin topically. It's been a mixture of jojoba oil, almond oil, myrrh, frankincense, and what's the last? And rose hip. That's what it is. I have it in this handy dandy oil pouring bottle from HomeSense because I originally had it in like a little pump bottle and the pump kept getting clogged because of the oil and I thought why don't I use a salad oil pourer? Hot tip of the day. Go get a salad oil pourer. This is so great for before bed. You just you know take it off and pour it like you would over a salad but you're putting it on your belly and everywhere else. I made sure to get a darker colored bottle because oils can go rancid, I guess, in light. Um, but yeah, I mixed together a bunch of different oils. You can do your own mixture too, but I really do like using frankincense and myrrh as the base of my mixture. It does add up in price when you're using good oils, but this does last quite a long time. I am onto my second bottle and I'm already eight months pregnant. I've been using it literally since the beginning, if not before the beginning of pregnancy. Um, it smells very strong. So I only use this at night, but I love this. And I definitely find such value in using essential oils mixed in with carrier oils on my skin. My skin responds really well to it and I highly recommend you concocting your own little mixture of oils. Something that I've also had to use topically on my skin has been a magnesium balm. I have had the most twitchy legs, my God. Like I'll get into bed and I don't know what it is, but it's like my brain is signaled to just like, this product is one that I found at the natural health food store. I'm sure you could find many different brands that offer a magnesium balm. Uh, it is all natural fragrance free and I just rub it all over my legs and my feet and I just find such relief. It is so helpful. I've also recently towards the end of my pregnancy started taking a magnesium supplement as well because I've been extra twitchy but this really got me through several months of just little twitches here and there and I definitely recommend if you are someone that is dealing with any type of muscle spasms or even sore muscles, go get some magnesium balm. So in the beginning of my pregnancy, I really struggled with nausea and puking. I was borderline HG since it was COVID and I don't have a GP in the area after three years of trying. I wasn't officially diagnosed as HG, but I was losing weight, puking multiple times a day and keeping absolutely no food down. Um, and it was a really difficult 16 or so weeks for me. I fell into a bit of a depression because it just felt like my entire day revolved around feeling like crap and trying to get some type of nutrients in. Not a good time. Um, something that I found really valuable when I was out and about was these pregnancy pops. 
I didn't really find much value in things like ginger or eating crackers. Like it, it just didn't help me, but something that kind of could take my mind off of like the bile rising in my throat was these sour candies. You can find them online, you can find them at like pregnancy stores, but any type of like sour candy or something that was a little bit sour or minty really helped trigger my brain to kind of calm that nausea a bit. Um, I found it really helpful. So maybe it's helpful for you if you're in the throes of nausea. Something else that was also really helpful was a alcohol-free mouthwash. I just needed to get the puke taste out of my mouth. Like it's TMI, but it's also, it's the truth. Pregnancy again is uncomfortable. And when you have so much nausea and when you're constantly throwing up, you need something to kind of clear that out of your system. <laughs> and so this helped. I definitely had a uh, puke come up my nose on multiple occasions. And so having something that you could gargle and like throw your head back and it kind of felt like it got like, I don't know, the fumes of it kind of like went up your nostrils a little bit and cleared yourself out. This was really helpful after brushing my teeth. Um, make sure you get an alcohol-free one. I don't really know if that's like a huge deal, but like I made sure to get an alcohol free one and I got this at my natural health food store. Also to do with feeling nauseous, I found that being pregnant during a pandemic was a little bit difficult because when you're nauseous, having a mask on was a little bit difficult. I'm a huge proponent of mask wearing and being safe. And you know, that is just a necessity in our times right now but it definitely was a little bit difficult being nauseous with a mask on. So something that I found really helpful was using a drop of essential oil inside of my mask to just take away the smell, to take away any, you know, outside smell. It just felt like it was refreshing to smell this rather than just stew in my nausea. I love sage essential oils. I use them all the time. I recommend them all the time. This one is their refresh one. You literally just need one single drop. I mean, even if you're not pregnant, this is still a really nice thing to do, but being pregnant and having to wear a mask, I really, really found value in this. Okay, especially early pregnancy, I had pregnancy stuffy nose. There's a word for it. I don't remember what it is, but it sucks. Something to absolutely have on hand is some type of saline salt spray. I absolutely love saline sprays. This one is from uh, X Lear, Lear. I'm not sure, you can buy it at a health food store. I'm sure there's multiple different brands. Obviously try to get one that is minimal ingredients, but I really, really love using this. I also highly recommend getting yourself a humidifier. I love them. I find that I just do not like my entire breathing system unless I have a humidifier on. Like Glenn and I definitely notice like when we travel, if we don't have one handy, we wake up with like totally dry, like noses, dry throats. It's just not nearly as nice as having a room with a humidifier. So definitely get yourself one of those. It's also great for babies to have a humidifier. So it's a win-win for now and for later. Okay, let's talk about some supplements because these are things that are non-negotiables for me throughout pregnancy. And obviously you need to speak to your own doctor, your naturopath, whomever you're working with. But for me, these were things I was taking every single day and still am, and I recommend from that angle. But again, do what's right for you. The first obviously being a high quality prenatal. I have been using this one from Cytomatrix. This doesn't say prenatal on it, but it is prenatal. Uh, I got this from my naturopath and I started taking this at least six months before even trying to conceive to make sure that all of my levels were at a really good place before starting to conceive. Something that is huge for having a healthy pregnancy is obviously having your right balance of minerals, having folic acid, having your body be in the best shape that it possibly can be. So get yourself a very high quality prenatal. You will not regret it. Get on it sooner than later. Something else that I've been supplementing on and off pretty much my entire adult life has been iron. This is a really high quality one from Thorn. It's called Ferrisorb. I really like this one because it also includes a vitamin C, which helps you absorb the iron better. And it also has a bit of uh, folate and B12. I really like this one. It 
tastes like blood. It's really gross, but that's when you know it's really good, right? Again, I get this through my natural path. I stopped using it during my second trimester because my iron levels were good when I was testing. And now that I'm coming into my third, I've definitely noticed being a little bit sleepier and a little bit less energetic. I had my bloods done and I am on the lower side again. So I will start back up with supplementing iron. Another non-negotiable for me has always been a good quality probiotic. I currently have it at home in my fridge because it is a fridge stable product, so I don't have it physically here with me. I will insert a slide right now. I think gut health is the utmost importance. Get on it, pregnant or not, it is something that you should absolutely be looking into, but especially during pregnancy, it was very important for me to keep up with a probiotic. So this is the one that I've been using. The last two supplements that I recommend, and again, I take them outside of pregnancy, but they're especially important during pregnancy, it is vitamin D3 and a omega-3. I really like this one because it's plant-derived. This is from Nutrisy. I'm going to leave all the brands linked below so you can find all these products, but uh, again, I'm sure you can find what's local to you, but these are ones that I have been using for a long time and really love. The last thing that I've been using that isn't really a supplement, but is hella helpful is Tums. Oh my God, go get some Tums. Even if you don't have reflux now, you might later. You'll want some of this on hand. I have had the worst reflux the past couple of weeks. Earlier on in pregnancy, weirdly enough, I had pretty bad reflux. And then now as I'm in the end kind of stages of pregnancy, I've had that reflux ramp up again. My naturopath also said that you could take like a cup of water with like some baking soda in it, but I haven't tried that yet. It says on the back here that pregnant women can take up to six tablets at a time, which seems extremely excessive. I mean, you do you, but I've been taking like one and then if I need to take another, I take another. I never take like the maximum dose. I always take like the minimum and then see how I feel and then add more if I need it. But I mean, again, you do you. Okay, this has been another pregnancy essential that Maybe you don't necessarily need this brand, but it is awesome if you can get your hands on one. I have a Theragun back massager. My God, it's out of batteries. <laughs> but this, it vibrates really quickly and uh, it is so helpful for when you have back aches or something is tight in your body. It's just, oh, it's so helpful. It's like getting a massage, but at home. They have smaller versions that are like handheld ones. There's also other brands that obviously aren't as expensive. I absolutely recommend getting some type of massage gun or massage tool. There's also one that I've tried from Amazon. It's like a long sock thing with like two massage balls in it and you put it behind and the massage balls like get into your back. That's great too. So there's something for every budget, but get something that can help you loosen your back knots. You'll start to get back knots, especially at the end of pregnancy, it just, you're carrying so much more weight, man. It's just so nice to have something that can just help loosen your muscles up. Also, hot tip, you can use like a tennis ball or like a lacrosse ball or some type of like small but hard ball to roll out the bottoms of your feet. Game changer. That also kind of brings me into inviting professionals into your healthcare and wellness routine. Obviously, this is something that is dependent on your budget. But if you're somebody who has insurance that covers that or you have benefits or it's something that you could save up and, and do, I highly recommend booking in. Seeing a chiropractor or a masseuse or an acupuncturist, it is so well worth your money. Even if it's just asking your partner to massage your back or massage your wrists and arms or your feet and your legs, whatever it is, Having just a little bit of help with these types of things and getting into that relaxed mode is so important. Something that I have been making time for has been my pelvic floor prep. I have invested in taking the Bell Method. Some of you may have heard of her on Instagram. She is, I believe, a Toronto influencer who does like pelvic floor based content and modules. She does a ton of free content over on her Instagram, which I will link below. But doing some type of pelvic floor preparation and like breathing work and stretching work, my God, it seems to be such a missing link in so many people's births. And I feel like it is just such an essential to include. There is so much free content on the internet for you. So if price is a problem, then there's something for everybody online. 
but it's definitely worth looking into pelvic floor health and just being aware of that whole realm because it is such a key piece in birth. Okay, I also have some clothing items that I have to recommend because this has been such an essential for me. This is something that I have seen in other essentials videos, but like they are spot on. Go and buy a pair of Align Lululemons. Like, do it yesterday. These will grow with you your entire pregnancy. I sized up at least one size, maybe two. They are so comfortable. They are buttery soft and they grow with you. I have purchased the legging version. I've purchased the shorts version. Highly recommend. They are probably my number one clothing purchase for pregnancy. If you're gonna buy one thing, go get yourself some lines. Another suggestion is comfortable bras. You're gonna grow and you probably will need some support. I was like an A, B cup before pregnancy and now like I got my boobs back, you guys. It's kind of weird. Uh, so I need a little bit more support and something that I have found is super comfortable is the airy bras. Not sure what the style name for these were. It's kind of like a stretchy sports bra. They definitely had really bad sizing. Like this is a medium and I could have easily gone up to a large and I'm usually like a 34 band. So if you are a larger bust, might not work for you. But if you do have a smaller bust to begin with, check out the Airy line. They are so comfortable and they are quite stretchy. I really, really, really have enjoyed their underwear and their bras throughout pregnancy. Again, you're probably gonna need to size up, but they are worth checking out. Wait for a sale, go get some. Pretty much everything that I purchased for my pregnancy was just regular clothes and a size up. I, obviously being pregnant over summer, purchased a lot of different sundresses. This is a really pretty one that I got from Zara and I actually got quite a few different like smocked style ones from Zara because they're just so easy to wear, super comfortable. They're something that I can probably wear after pregnancy as well and I really love them. So yeah, definitely worth checking out Places like Zara, even though I don't really love shopping much fast fashion, you also don't want to be spending a million dollars on a new wardrobe while you're pregnant because you're only going to be pregnant for a short time in your life. So something like this was a good buy because I can wear this after pregnancy and it was probably 35 bucks. I'm not sure, but worth it. The only actual pregnancy things that I got from a maternity shop were some pregnancy shorts. Um, these ones are the ones with the stretchy waistband. I really like these. They were a great purchase from Pink Blush. I got these on sale, so I feel like I have no regrets purchasing a pair of maternity shorts. I will be keeping these for my next pregnancy if I'm pregnant over warmer months. I also got a pair of like longer pants as well. Same kind of style with the waistband. These are like a straight leg, kind of medium wash denim. I think these were a great purchase. I know a lot of people say like, don't bother buying maternity items, but when you get it on sale and when you're only buying like a pair of shorts and a pair of jeans, it's just so nice to have the choice of having that back in your closet. Cause I outgrew my jeans really early on. So it's nice to have something, especially come cooler weather. These are great. Like getting out of breath from talking so much. I'm at that stage where it's like, I feel like my lung span is just like so minimal. The last clothing item that I want to recommend is these ruched dresses, like what I'm wearing. This is the one that I shared in my White Fox Boutique haul about a month ago. That entire video has such great pieces. I have been wearing the crap out of all of the dresses that I shared. They're just so comfortable and they look so nice and you just look like you're put together and you don't have to think about it. You'll look banging, you'll be comfortable. Again, 10 out of 10, it's really inexpensive and I can wear this after pregnancy as well. So, I mean, win, win, win. I think that was all of like the physical items that I wanted to share. I also wanted to mention a couple of Instagram accounts that I found super helpful during pregnancy and leading up to birth. Um, obviously, I follow a lot of different like kids style content leading into being a parent. Uh, but I'm trying to just share ones that are kind of like more birth and like young kid related rather than like psychology accounts that I follow. Cause like I find those really interesting too. And like toddler activity accounts, but like we're not at that point yet. Let's just talk about like the here and the now with pregnancy. 
The first one is the pelvic floor person that I mentioned, the Bell Method. Again, I will list all of these down below in the info box. Go and follow them. They are wonderful resources. The Bell Method does all stuff to do with pelvic floor health, invaluable information. Check her out. The second account to follow is Built to Birth. She is also on YouTube and makes great YouTube content. She is a doula and she just has such empowering content on just feeling really confident that your body is meant to do this. You can do this. Another account that I highly recommend following is Sick Happens. Penny is a pediatric nurse from New South Wales and she runs this account. I have actually purchased her online course as well, which I can highly recommend. But uh, the Instagram page is fantastic. She shares a ton of free educational information on how to navigate children being sick because inevitably your baby or your child is probably going to get sick in some type of way and you want to respond with confidence and being calm. Another great account to follow for infant first aid is Safe Beginnings. We hired them to do our infant first aid course and we had a bunch of friends and family over in our backyard to do like a full CPR and like choking and like all of that kind of course and do it hands on. I feel so much better after physically having done that because I have the skills and the resources to fall back on now if there ever was a problem. Hopefully there won't be but I feel prepared if there was. An account that I feel like is really popular that a lot of you probably already follow is Taking Care of Babies. She does a sleep course and it is really helpful. I like sleep. I want my baby to sleep. <laughs> I'm gonna do everything in my power that I can do to help that become a reality. And she shares a lot of great information on that. So worth the follow. Another account that I've been super interested in following has been Sign and Grow. This is a baby ASL sign language account and it's something that I've been really excited to eventually do with my child. I used to babysit these twins that knew some baby sign language and my god it was so helpful and interesting and I just think that fostering any type of early communication with your child would be so helpful. So starting understanding a little bit of this now so that I can start implementing it earlier on would be really helpful. So yeah, check her out, really cool account. Another account that I found really interesting to do with like physical therapy and development has been the Kinactive Kids account. Emily, who is a pediatric doctor of physical therapy, does content on like walking and crawling and just baby movement and it is so interesting my goodness like there's just so much that you don't really think about and she'll post about it and you're like man that makes so much sense and just like strength training and building those muscles and it's just so much more than just like tummy time i hope that you guys find value in the different things that i've shared i know that it isn't all just pregnancy related but it's definitely things i feel like are preparing me for life as a mom it's so weird to think that I'm going to be a mom and I'm very excited and very humbled and grateful and I'm so excited to share this journey with all of you. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope that you try some of the things that I have recommended. Please let me know what were your pregnancy essentials? What were some accounts that you loved following? I, I just want to hear it all. Hit me with it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Please don't forget to like it if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new here. Leave me a comment and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.